Okay, so um, here I've got a lovely question with family trees on. I think these are the uh, probably the most um, things that students find most problematical to interpret. So um, let's have a look. This one's about pituitary dwarfism, and it's an inherited condition in humans in which affected and individuals have very short limbs. The allele, so this is the important stuff, isn't it, where it tells us, the allele for pituitary dwarfism, little d, is recessive to the allele for normal limbs, big D, and it's situated on the X chromosome, so its locus is on the X chromosome. So this shows part of one affected family. Now, when you're dealing with and you're told that it's sex linkage, it's always quite a good idea to identify your affected individual. So here's number 12, and he's got to be X, little d, and he's boy, so he's got to be uh, Y, affected, affected male here. And this one has also got to be X, little d, Y. So thinking, right, okay, where do you inherit your stuff from? He's inherited, so individual 12 has inherited his Y chromosome from his dad, because his mum hasn't got one, and he must have inherited his X chromosome, that, with that affected uh, allele, from his mum. But she has not got pituitary dwarfism, so she's also got a dominant allele. Same logic applies up here, he's got his Y chromosome from his dad, he's got his affected X chromosome from his mum. And all we can say about all the others is we know the genotypes of the all the boys because they can he's unaffected x big d y because he's a boy uh, number nine is x big d y he's not affected and he's male but the females in this because number two who is the ancestor of them all has got both types of alleles we don't know whether these individuals are carriers or homozygotes apart from number 10. Now number 10 uh, could have inherited her X chromosome from number 4. So that's where she's got that one from. She's got that from her dad. Okay. We don't know anything about number 6 or number 3 because they have no children. Okay. So the, all, the only X chromosome number 4 has got to hand on is that one that's affected. So that's where number 10 has got hers from. Uh, this girl here, for the same, by the same logic, this mother, we don't know what her other chromosome is be affected or not. But number eight is normal, so she must have inherited the X big D from her mom and the X little D from her dad, because that's all he's got to give her. Okay, so now get on to the questions. So it's always a really good idea to just have a little bit of an annotation of your family tree, work out what you actually do know and what you don't know. Identify and explain. So we need to identify our evidence and explain it. One piece of evidence, we only need one, to show that the allele for dwarfism, pituitary dwarfism, is recessive. So what's our evidence that it is recessive? So our evidence is here and here. We only need to use one of these couples. I'm going to start with couple number one and two. Um, so, the allele must be recessive because Unaffected, oh, 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 can't spell. Unaffected individuals, this is my evidence. Individuals, one and two, evidence. <coughs> Have 
an affected child. Four. And that, that's it really. If they've got two unaffected parents, they're giving rise to an affected child. That allele has got to be a recessive allele. So, explain the reason why. And we're told the genotype, individual 10, X, big D, X, little B. So, uh, 10 is unaffected. And must have X big D uh, and has inherited X little D from affected. Father. So remember up here, she's got one unaffected chromosome from her mother and an affected one from her affected father. So, now I need to explain why individual 11 must be X, D, big D, Y. Individual 11, 11 is unaffected. must have X big D and is male so his other sex chromosome is Y. Very good. I then over here we've got the really straightforward stuff. So as their son showed pituitary dwarfism, so that's number 12, Individuals 10 and 11 conducted a genetic counsellor. So genetic counsellors look at family histories of diseases and predict probabilities uh, that subsequent children might be affected. So what prediction would have been made about the probability of the couple's next child showing pituitary dwarfism? And then it says, complete the genetic diagram below to explain your answer. Well, I'm going to do the genetic diagram first, and then from my Punnett square, I'll be able to work out a probability without them to faff around and do it in my head. So, parental phenotypes. Individual uh, 10 is an unaffected female. And individual... 11 is an unaffected male. Parental genotypes, and of course you could write female or male in there, I'm just a bit lazy today. Uh, individual 10, we know that her genotype is X big D, X little d, not only because we've been told it down here, but because we've managed to work it out because she's got an affected father and therefore must have one of those. And of course, father. 11, unaffected, big D, and Y. So gametes, she's producing X big D gametes and X little D gametes. And notice in sex link crosses you do have to put the X and Y chromosomes in to your gametes and all the way through. So the gender is also going to be important in your ratio at the end. So I'm going to stick these into a Punnett square. X big D Y. X big D X. D. So my first one. I like to put my sex chromosomes in first. My offspring genotype. X big D. X big D. Unaffected. Female. Next one's X big D Y 
unaffected. That'll give you enough room to write this stuff in. X big D, X little d. So, um, I'm going to call her a carrier. And of course we don't know, well they've not had any subsequent children, we don't, they wouldn't know if they got a girl whether it was uh, effect, um, just because it's unaffected, they wouldn't know whether their child's genotype is X big D, X big D or X big D, X little d. And then last but not least, X little d, Y, so affected male. So in fact, the next child, irrespective of gender, has a 1 out of every 4 chance of being affected. Uh, and of course we could write that as 25% or we could write it as a probability 0.25. If they said what's the chance, you know, if their next son, if their next child is a girl, what are the chances? Obviously that's zero. Uh, if they said if their next child is a boy, what are the chances of him being affected? It would be, that's a one to one ratio, so that would be 50%. So the great thing about sex linkages, you can just usually count up the uh, probabilities from there.